But he had one weakness, and we'll be telling you that weakness in the class. One weakness. And that weakness was complacency. He had another weakness that people never got to know of until he touched Waterloo. Women in Team Jackary could sleep with up to about a dozen women in one day. In Team Jackary, and in team is spelled N-T-I-M. Jackary is G-Y-A-K-A-R-I. In team Jackary. Now, in team Jackary, my brother, my sister, was a very powerful king. He became the third chief or king of the Dentura. We all know the very first king of the Dentura people was called Mumunumfi. Mumunumfi was a very powerful king. Now before the Dentura got known as the Dentura, they were called the Aguna from 1500. From 1620 onwards, they changed their name from Aguna to Dentura. Hey! From 1500, the Dentura people were called Aguna. From 1620, 120 years later, their name changed, my brother and my sister, to the Dentura people. And their very first king was called Mumunumfi. Mumunumfi became king after Mumunumfi. My brother, my sister, we had the powerful Buamponsim, the first taking over. And when Buamponsim died in 1694, it was Ntim Jakari who took over the reins of not Aguna Hine but Denchra Hine. So we can say that Denchra transcends 1620. Denchra, my brother, my sister, was originally called Aguna and their capital was called Jukwa. Jukwa. Today, their capital is not Jukwa. It's Dunkwa or nothing. Hey! My brother, my sister, from Mumunumfi all the way down to the great Buamponsim. And Buamponsim was such a terrible king in the sense of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. He never forgave. So his people became extremely disciplined. If you made a mistake, you have to pay for the mistake. There was nothing like forgiveness. So it kept the people on their feet. He told them the gods do not forgive. If you are supposed to sacrifice and you don't, the gods will visit you with harm. Punishment. Mumunumfi was their first king. Followed by Buamponsim, after who a secondary school has been named. And we talked about him yesterday. Today we are talking about the man who took over from Buamponsim. Ntim Jakari. He actually was not supposed to be king, but he used force and also used some dirty tactics to be able to push off Akoto and take over. And he became king. Now when Ntim Jakari became king, hey, women, my God, in a day, 12 women, right from morning, Pine, 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 pine. Afternoon, pine, 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 pine. Evening, pine, 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 pine. My brother, my sister, he had so much waste power and energy. Very tall and handsome. The women too loved him. Atupan hini, the first. Ah, Dentra hini. 
Now listen to him. He was also a very powerful warrior. Very powerful. Now look at what happened. Now in the days of the denture, something interesting happened. They took over the whole of the Ashanti and they made the Ashanti a vassal state. You know what it means to say vassal state? It means you pay tribute to us. Just like Gold Coast was a vassal state to the British. My brother, my sister. So the Ashantis paid tribute to Ntim Jakari. He owned Ashanti. Remember, they are all Akans. Hey! The Dentra became the most powerful. My brother, my sister, at the time, amongst the Akan speaking people, everybody feared them. From Mumunumfi, all the way down to Buamponsim, down to the great Ntim Jakari. Hey! Ntim Jakari could sit down and call Osei Tutu. Bra! Osei Tutu would run all the way from Kumewu or Kumase and come to him. Mano, be perfect fro. Yaudi ba ayano. Mafuni me. Na me perfect fro. Me perfect fro. Me perfect fro. Juada or Mubra. Osei Tutu would go and bring the women. At the time, as part of the tribute, you know what it means to say tribute, gold, and so many other such things, including slaves, given to the denture, included pretty women for Ntim Jakari. Beautiful Asante women. Osei Tutu will arrange and send them to the man. He will hammer all of them time after time, 12 in a day. He had waste and power. Ntim Jakari. Hey, Ntim Jakari. Or the Susu say, Ntim. Listen to what happened next. So, Osei Tutu one time was not able to bring him the women that he wanted. You know what happened? He imprisoned him. So we knew Swadie. Osei Kufi. When he saw the air, brah, and locked him up in the palace at Dentra. At that time, Okwanfu Anochi was also there, locked up. They saw him as a madman. He will prophesy to them, they will not take it serious, it will happen. They were seeing him as a madman. But over there, Osei Tutu and Okonfo Anochi became very good friends. And they became so good. One day, after a prayer that came to pass and prophecies that came to pass, Ntim Jakari decided to free Okonfo Anochi and let him just go. But he told him, I want one favor from you. And that favor is for you to free this man. Or say to two, say, ah, but what do you want this man for? Nobody wants him. And then swear the animal locking him. So would you free no mommy? Why? And he freed or say to two. Little did he know that that was the beginning of a big empire and a kingdom to come. So they left. And or say to two. The first and Okonfonochi now began a certain beautiful Kamedari friendship. And Okonfonochi helped him spiritually to be able to bring Ashanti. When he left and was going, Ntim Jakari said, Ah, why did I leave this guy? Matisse Onukrano, our army. He has soldiers and all those people. Ah! He was now following up to try and arrest back Osei Tutu. That was the biggest mistake he made. He freed him, forgetting that he had already asked him to go and bring him women 
and some other such tributes, and he had not done it. For that matter, before freeing him, he should have said, go and bring this thing all, bring me this before I free you. But no, when he left, he was now chasing him. At that time, remember in the days of Buan Ponsim, who was very free with the Dutch and the English. Remember in 1692, when the English and the Dutch came over here to trade, it was Buan Ponsim who went to meet with them and he was able to pick up some very good information, intelligence in terms of military from the British and the Dutch. They gave him two cannons and he forced his way and got the third one. You know what a cannon is? It, it, it blasts bombs, cannon balls, destroying ships and other such things. For the first time, a local army was able to use that. And that was in Tim Jakari. He used it against the Asantis. He routed the Asantis. They all ran away. And he kept chasing them, laughing. Ah! And they met Chromo. Who was a Kofu with new Swadia? You see, Bremen, a man. Who was on a weird tuno? My trouble be here. He routed the whole Ashanti army, not knowing it was a trick. Okonfu Anochi told him, the only place where you can win this battle is at a place called Feyiasi. If you go to Feyiasi, you will win the war. So all the Asante soldiers had actually run to Feyiasi and they were hiding there just around Busumchi. Hiding quietly. And Ntim Jakari thought he had won the war. When he reached Feyiasi, then he saw the real Asante soldiers. That was where it was said, Kuma Apima, Apimbeba. Hey! Fire for fire. Ratatatatata. Blaka, blaka, boom, 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 boom. Ratatata, 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 ratatata. The Denchira army destroyed. And Ntim Jakari and his wife were arrested. They slaughtered them like Ngongo. That was the end of the entra. The moment the Ashanti and the Osei Kofi, the first, my brother, my sister, defeated the Dentra. He destroyed Dentra from that time till now. My brother, my sister, a lot of the culture of the Ashanti, they actually borrowed from the Dentra. They also have their own version of the golden stool. They also, so many different things, including the stools they even sit on, is the same as the Ashanti. The battle of Feyiasi happened in 1701. And that was the independence day of the Ashanti kingdom. When they defeated this man, that was the end. Oh my God. And Tim Jakari destroyed the Dentura. And the Dentura people have never forgiven him. Number one, he wasn't even supposed to be king. He forced his way. From 1696, when our hero, Buan Ponsim, died. Some other sources say 1595. He took over. He died after being in power. My brother, my sister, for 13 solid years, from 1696. My brother, my sister, that's about five years, isn't it? Five years, yes. He was slaughtered. They killed him. And he brought the whole of Dentura. That was controlling the whole of the Ashanti and made the Ashanti a vassal state. That was the beginning of the Ashanti kingdom under Osei Tutu the first. Osei Kofi Tutu and Okonfo Anochi. It was right there at Feyiasi that Okonfo Anochi chanted and he spat into the ground. When he spat or Tintesuo, a gufom, and a pejaye into a cola nut tree. Cola nut tree. Producer, show me the, 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 the photo of that tree. Every plant comes out from a seed or from such thing or come for a notch spot on the ground and said, 
If I was sent by the ancestors, to come and save the people, let this happen. And when he spat into the ground, it came out, pop! And he told the Ashantis, this is the beginning of the Ashanti kingdom. It's going to sprout like this kola nut tree in Feyasi. You see how history is interesting. Now listen to what happened. Producer, I'm waiting for that tree. Very beautiful tree, kola nut tree, be seen. The Ashantis are not noted for eating Bissing. If it's Bissing at all, then it's the northern people. Why did Okonfo Anoche create a Kola nut tree amongst the Ashantis? It's very simple. This is the tree. Do you know any? My brother, my sister, they tied a white material around it and then they built a small monument around it without actually protecting it. This is in Feyase. Now show me what has become of this tree. A pastor last week said that he had seen a vision and he saw that a tree that Okofu Anochi created, he spat into the ground and it came out like this. We have almost the same story when you go to Larbanga. He felt this tree. Is that supposed to signify the end of Ashanti? Is that why we are having so much problems in Ashanti mine? Because when Okofu Anochi did this, he told them this is the beginning of the Ashanti kingdom and it will sprout like this kola nut. Today, look at what a pastor did to it. But he gave them another thing. He brought all their stools together. And he insult, inserted his sword into it and said, The day that this shall be pulled out shall signify the end of the shanty. My brother, my sister, the battle of Feyase, where in Tim Jakari was conquered, and the Denchra never saw the light of the day again as an empire. The Denchra took more than 60% of this present day Ghana and the Mumunumfi, all the way down to Buampon Sim. And even to Intim Jakari. Today we remember you, Intim Jakari. Intim Jakari. Atopahini. Intim Jakari. Or the sisters say, Intim. Oh, Intim Jakari. Intim Jakari. Yeah, Intim Jakari. Intim Jakari. Uni Yaminko. Uni Yaminko, Uni Yaminko. Oh, Ntim Jakari. He was slaughtered in 1701. He and his wife. He wanted women who were married from the Ashanti. Or Sarkofi Tutu said no. He had the power of the army. He was the only empire in the whole of the nation. That had cannons. Yeah, Tim Jakari, we need a minko. In Tim Jakari, we need a minko. We need a minko. We need a minko. What? Yeah, Tim Jakari. In Tim Jakari, we need a minko. In Tim Jakari, we need a minko. In Tim Jakari, we need a minko. In the burden of knowledge, I ask you, now that you know what to do to 
Bia ne ni ole amini oba fe ye zunda kaka ne meza ka yine ye papa ngobo ka ye nang fifia ye nyanu ka na wo ba na ye we be den lele ya jima singa be konne lele ya jima singa be ri tutu gwavi tutu gwavi apa mula ho meu mama mula ho meu au na ima vinye in Tim Jakari, rest in perfect peace. It's been the African history class. And today, we've been talking about the great In Tim Jakari, who the dangerous are not proud of for what he did. But time now for the lion. Get ready for the game changer. The emperor, the conqueror, the champion, the lion is here. Yeah. Ah,